What's up, bro? What's up? <laughs> Can't believe it's, it's happening, bro. Black Panther, we're kind of fabric in theaters. And I thought we could just talk a little bit about the journey to get here, uh, specifically the musical journey. I think when we started on this, we didn't have kids. <laughs> and we have two now. Yeah, yeah. Four years ago, I think, I got the first version of the script. Obviously, that was a very different version of what the script that we see in the movie, um, because Chadwick was just in that script. After Chadwick's passing, you had to rewrite a whole script. It took a long time. And now just even thinking about it, like how, like thinking about the movie and thinking about the music, like how are we gonna be able to use these themes that we had in the first one? How, like the talking drum was like so connected to like T'Challa sound and like, you know, you heard that instrument throughout the whole movie. Mm -hmm. Like, would that work to have in the new movie? Would or would it feel strange? Or I had a hard time imagining, just imagining the music without him or without his character. I remember talking to you about the about Namor, mm -hmm. and the way that I started on this movie was to try to figure out what to do with the telecom and that world because that was something completely different and. You were telling me how it was inspired by Mayan culture. I didn't know a lot about Mayan culture or Mayan music. I think early on you were like telling me that we we're talking about going there. Yeah. Going to Mesoamerica. With the first film, I, I just remember how much that trip to Senegal informed our, our sound for, yeah. the, for the movie, how much stuff you got out of that trip. And I, I figured that for us to do this particular culture uh, the right way, you know, like the culture of Talokan, and, and if we're gonna treat it the same way we treat the, the Wakandan culture in terms of like having the care and respect for it shown through the work and, and you know, it made sense for us to for us to get there, like mainly you. For me, it was the idea, I was just super excited to be able to go, start off the journey in Mexico City, working with musical archeologists in the day that were, they were focusing and spent so much time on, on Mayan, culture and Mayan music, that whole culture, that whole, all, the, all their music, all their literature, all their dances was, was forcibly erased. So we don't know what the music sounded like. But fortunately, my, my, my friend Camilo, who I worked with in Mexico, he was hooked me up and like told me about all these incredible musical archeologists. I was sort of recording with them. And you know, the first time I came to the studio, the musician had laid out the whole studio floor with instruments that I'd never seen before. Like all these kind of flutes, like the clay flutes, turtle shells that you hit with sticks, seashells that you blow in. I mean, and I've read about sea seashells in the movie, in the script, because mm. that was in the script. Yeah. So I knew that for Namor, like whatever sound he has, the seashell needs to be part of it. There was a flute called the, the death whistle, which sounded like a crazy, like human animal scream that, that we made part of Namor's sound when he's doing like crazy action stuff. So we started recording with these uh, musicians during the day, and then at night I booked artists, Mex Mexican artists, to come by the studio, and I would work with them at night. And I would call you from the studio when I was in with, you know, Son of Eklan, with Aleman, mm -hmm. with Snow the Product, mm -hmm. Furikush, and you would like you would tell them about the story of the movie. So we were writing the songs based off the script and writing for special moments. You know, you're telling them about Namor, you're telling about Namor's relationship with his mom. And we were able to together create these sounds for the movie. And you were shooting it at the time. So I remember sending those songs back like back to you as we as we written. We were taught this way with from Kenny Hall. Yeah. In, in, in school, you want to get the composer in early as possible, you know, um, and and cause cause so often whether it's to save money or whether it's just a product of process, the composer like is somebody who, who, who comes in late mm -hmm. like in the post production process, and, and you know you, you, we don't work like this, but I, I hear about situations like this where the movie's just about complete, and it's like all right now I'm gonna ask for music, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the last piece we did in Mexico was because you had asked me like, is there any? Can we find any artists that could also sing or rap in Mayan? Yeah, and I remember mm -hmm. like. In Mex asking Camilo, I was like, is there any, you know, any artists in Mexico City that could that speak can sing or rap in Mayan? We didn't find anyone. Finally we started going on Instagram. And I think I just like inst typed in like Mayan rap on Instagram and this rap community from Yucatan. Yucatan showed up on my phone. And I we DM'd this guy, Pat Boy. Yeah, Pat Boy. And it was like, Hey, are you are you around? Like, are you able to record something for 
Black Panther. That was that was also a funny thing about Mexico when I'm starting recording there with musicians and artists because they're like, "Why are you working on Black Panther? Why are you here in Mexico? Because no one knew anything about the movie back then." So I'd like, "Well, th listen to me. Like, this is the story." So I had to go through the whole yeah. story. Oh with my them, god! You know? Yeah, yeah, uh, that's great. But uh, so I, we went out to Merida, we got a little house there, and we had Papo and his Mayan rap community come out to the house. We recorded the song there, like I, I made a beat out of these Mayan instruments, and they started to rap out of, on this, and it was like, I never heard, it's only one, I think there's only one million people left in the world speaking this language. And like Papo was telling me, he was like, yeah, when, I, when we got started, you know, no one took us seriously. Like people are like, why would you rap in Mayan? Yeah. But as soon as we started to book shows around, you know, kids loved hearing us rap in Mayan. As soon yeah. as we started booking shows, like yeah. the older people were like, oh, cool. Like, yeah. like you're making like you're making money on this. Yeah. Um, and and giving a different <laughs> type of respect. And, yeah. And but people love that song, bro. Yeah. Like it's it always messes my my my, my mind up when I hear uh, rapping in different languages. Yeah. You know, um, I, I always find it like beautiful. Yeah. And also like uh, I don't know like a sense of like a sense of pride, mm -hmm. you know like like um, you know knowing like the history of, of, of the culture of hip hop and rap music, you know what I'm yeah. saying, and, and and you know seeing it travel internationally and and, and change and be a, be adopted, you know, yeah. but also just like as a, as a filmmaker, like I listen to words. So much of my job is mm -hmm. as, as a you know as a writer as a director is like just listening to people talk, you know, yeah. hearing that hearing them rap. It's insane, you know. what I'm saying like just, just like the like like the rhythm of it and how they, how they choosing the rhyme and, and yeah, that song made me really happy. I can't wait, can't wait for people to to to, to hear it. You know what I mean? Like in the, in the film. After Mexico, <clears throat> you know, we had the opportunity to, to go to Nigeria together yeah. because we're like, okay, well, we worked on Namor's world here. Let's go. Let's put some work, more work into the world of Wakanda. I did not believe it until like I saw you on the plane that we were gonna be able to go together because <laughs> like you're like the most busy man I know like editing the movie, but you were able to make it work. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, big big shout shout to uh, Ime, Ime Archie Bond. It was important to me to go because I because I, I missed the trip that you that you made um, to to Senegal and and you know I had made trips to the continent for research for the film but never. One specifically for music, and I didn't want to miss Mexico, you know. Like, and, and when I realized that we had that gap, we could go back to the continent for the music on this one. I didn't want to miss that, and, and I thought it would be right, you know, like, cause, 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 like you said, the film is a new movie. It's not. It's a continuation of uh, of the first Black Panther, but it's also something something different. Yeah. With the passing of the, the great Chadwick Boseman, we had to recalibrate. You know, um, first we, we you know we, we shut down and. Had to figure out like what was what the next move would be, and, and once we decided that we were gonna move forward without without him and, and without the character that he played, we had to figure out what what, what would happen with the characters now if if, if Wakanda um, is gonna continue to to, to run and, and and continue to operate in the world that that we know from the first film, and as a result, um, Angela Bassett's character Queen Ramona stepped into power, stepped into the role of queen, and uh, all of the other characters that we know and love. In the country, they now took on uh, roles that have more weight. You know, the film had to reflect that, and as, re as a result, the music had to reflect that. I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit. You know, one of the first conversations we had when after I read the the, the script was like, you know, I, w I wanted to talk to you about like, okay, what are some of the artists we want to bring on board on the soundtrack? You know, but also like, you know, what it, what are some of these voices we want to bring into the movie? And we were talking about. Thames, uh, I was Georgia Smith. She's like they both have a magical vocal that that really I, I felt like really captured what was going on in in the characters inside their minds. Like mm -hmm. anytime you see uh, Queen Ramunda as being remin reminiscent about about T'Challa, you hear this the Thames like humming through on their melody to there. And then when it goes over to Shuri, thinking about her inner feelings and what she's dealing with. The melody that goes over to her is her theme, and that's sung by by Georgia Smith in the beginning. So, it's, it's interesting how so much of, of the storyline of the of the movie and the music of the movie is driven by by, by powerful female voices. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And in the, in the film, in that shift became a film about motherhood. Yeah. You know, it's a movie that holds a lot of themes, but motherhood is a is a major one, and, and 
it is very like beautiful to hear to hear all to hear those voices, you know, embedded into the score. And, and yeah, you remember we were talking about the trailer on the on the on the on the airplane. Yes, going over there, man, and, and trying to figure out like, you know, what what song like what musical moment would make sense yeah. for the, for the first piece for us to put out there. Yeah. And, and, and I could feel like okay, Ryan's in one of those crazy moods right now. Because you're, no, because you're like, hey, we mm -hmm. need a piece of music for the trailer. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll think about it. And I could tell, like, you you had already thought about it for like the last hour over and over and over and over <laughs> in your head. So you're like, you kept like just like saying like, oh, what about this song? What about this song? What about this song? <laughs> and then you were quiet for like 30 minutes, and they're like, hey, what do you think about this song? What do you think about this song? Like, <laughs> the way your mind works when it's like ultra moving ultra fast, like going through your entire life in front of your eyes. <laughs> You know, all the songs that meant something to you growing up. Oh like it's like God. it's like reading through a book like this. <laughs> and then I remember like, okay, you were quiet for like two hours. I was like eating my food. I was like sipping a little wine on the plane. I'm like and then like someone's knocking on my seat. Like, oh. <laughs> hey bro, what do you think of uh No Woman No Cry? <laughs> I love that song, man. I love the lyrics are so incredible and like I was thinking like I never heard that song in a movie. I don't. I don't think you ever heard in a trailer before. It's an incredible song, and and then yeah, you're right. Like the vocals, the lyrics of that song, can mean so many different things for different people. Yeah. And then you said the thing about like the the bridge of the song and how like a lot of, it's like so universal. Yeah. And like how you could, it yeah. reminds you of Kendrick. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, is there any way we can put those together? And yeah. It's like yeah, we'll, we'll. Yeah. You know, we wanted these, you know, the the powerful female voices on the score and one of the first person that came to mind was was also was Rihanna. Yeah. It was somebody we thought about like like uh when we realized the film was gonna shift. But but also I think for us it was knowledge that, you know, she 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 hadn't really been making music, it yeah. seemed like she was doing other things and you know, business and I think when the world kinda of found out she was about to be a mom, mm -hmm. you know, uh and we were making this 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 film with themes of, of about motherhood and, and, and themes about coming of age. It started to make sense again. Crazy enough, we was able to make it happen. You no, know? it was such a crazy journey. It was like started on a, on an idea that I recorded in Senegal, that worked in Senegal, and then I brought it to Mexico. And we put some 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 like Mexican guitarists in on it, and then I didn't really know what to do with it. But then I was like, I was like, okay, this could maybe be a song. I started writing some chords to it, and I had this melody, and I sent it to you. I was like, would you be okay to writing some lyrics on this? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, you were like, yo, could you write some words? Yeah. So I took it serious. I was like, well, I mean, I took it serious. Yeah. I know you could do it, but yeah. I, I, I don't think you. No, yeah, I'm not, not really a songwriter or anything like that. And it's crazy because I've been listening to music at that time written yeah. by like singer songwriters. So I, I was, I was literally like remarking on it at the time how, how hard that must be. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like to to write things that are that are, that are simple and poetic and melodic. But yeah, you know. Worked worked on the um, on what would become the chorus for "Lift Me Up." Yeah. Um, I was thinking about like, you know, because the song kind of feels like a lullaby, mm -hmm. in a in a way, but a lullaby that could go that could go both ways. Yeah. You know, um, and, some very powerful words. Yeah. And, and, and just being a, being a um a father now and and being older and, and uh, watching my wife become a mom and, and my relationship with my, my with my parents changing as they do when you get to you know, get to your late thirties. You know yeah. what I'm saying? If you're blessed to still have your parents, you know. Yeah. So I was trying, trying to, you know, put all of that in there, but all, but the whole time with that current of uh, Chadwick, yeah. you know, yeah. um, and, and and the character's relationship to the child, but also, you know, our relationship to him as a guy. Yeah. You know, he he was he was somebody who I think, who I think elevated us. You know what I'm saying? As a community and as a group of artists that worked that worked with him. You know. And he was also somebody who you knew, who you knew had your back. You know, he was gonna hold you down through any circumstances. So, mm -hmm. you know, them words kind of juxtaposed made a lot of sense. I thought, yeah. you know, um, and yeah, man, we got to work with Tim's and, yeah. and Rihanna. It was just a dream come true. This music has been recorded on four continents. <laughs> it's like I think yeah. over 200 musicians, over 40 vocalists. Yeah. You know, everyone comes from different cultures, and everyone has so unique, distinct sounds. Yeah. But on this movie, we bring it, we bring them all together and create something new for, for, for Wakanda forever, and yeah. and it all sounds like it's part of the same world. Yeah, I think it's been 14 years, bro. 14 years. Yeah, yeah. I was just trying to do the math while we, yeah. while we were talking, cause. 
because we, we 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 worked together in 2008. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was the same year we met. Mm -hmm. So so that's, you know, 08, 22, 2022. Yeah. We were talking about listening, we were listening to music together, mm -hmm. you know, before we started working together. Yeah. We wouldn't sit down and listen to movie scores. We would no. sit down and listen to songs. Yeah. You know? And that's what we really connected about, too.